Good morning. Welcome to the call. I'm delighted to have um, one of our founders uh, and our CTO on the call to talk about um, um, industry matters that we are often um, asked to comment on from you know, various customers um, and analysts and, and other people who are active in our market space. Um, I ch I've chosen a subject for us to discuss today, uh, which I think you're in agreement with, and that is um, why is data capture a logical problem? And I raise that because th this is the message you um, say to the company, you say to sales in terms of um, the, one of the reasons why you decided to develop the technology a number of years ago. Uh, and perhaps we ought to talk about that a little bit to understand your motivation uh, and um, what you saw was a challenge uh, in the marketplace. Um, just by way of background for the, for the listeners, um, this is a series of blog posts that um, we are presenting on a weekly basis uh, around the industry, around uh, cloud trade. Um, later on this week, because it's uh, International Women's Week, um, this week um, I have a conversation with uh, one of our colleagues, Amy Patel, uh, on women in tech. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what uh, Amy has to come up with. Um, but moving back to the subject today, you know, as you know, Richard, for the last 20 odd years, I've been working with OCR and, and various capture technologies and outsourcers um, to try and help people who receive many different document types uh, into their business and they need to extract various um, fields, elements of those documents and put them into a back end system. Um, and, you know, it's not just about capture, uh, it's about understanding that data and, and how you need to present it to your backend system. The objective being to stop people having to read and touch documents. Um, you know, I suppose a panacea, isn't it, to have end-to-end -end processing with no human intervention. Um, maybe that is a possibility. But I know in the conversations you and I have had over the years, you are very passionate about your beliefs and your view um, on how um, people should approach the challenge of capturing information off human readable documents. Perhaps you could share a bit about, you know, your view of the world and, and why um, you went down this route with cloud trade and indeed got global patent recognition for uh, our approach and technology. OK, thank you, Steve. Indeed. So I think you have to differentiate the, the difference between unidentified data capture and identified data capture. Unfortunately, they both tend to be called data capture, which confuses things a little bit, but they're quite different beasts and they require quite different technology. So unidentified data capture is what at its root, something like OCR does. It uh, goes into an image and it extracts the raw data, the words and the numbers from that image and puts it into another file. In fact, if you're doing, uh, you can do the same thing with PDF data extraction, you could see it as a as an unidentified data and that's the first stage you have to do anyway, which is where you navigate your way through all the the very convoluted file structure, which you know the PDF standard has in it and you find that those bits of data and then you, you, you extract them and you put them somewhere else. And we tend to call that sort of thing data extraction, but it is unidentified data extraction. Now unidentified data is really no use to man nor beast. You know, if you have the number one, two, three, four, five sitting somewhere and you don't know what that one, two, three, four, five is, it's no use to you. The really important part happens next, which is the identification of that data. And to go back to the question, which is, you know, which you asked originally, is it a logical problem? It is the identification of that data, which is a logical problem. Now, traditionally, people wouldn't tend to shy away, or they still do shy away from that part and they would use the, the OCR systems or the PDF data extraction system to get that raw data out and then rely on humans to identify it um, or have some very, very simple mechanisms to identify that data. They would implement fairly simple logic. Uh, for example, something might always be in the same place. I mean, that's a logical, that's a logical step to say it's always over here on the document or even that it's always sort of you find something unique and you take a little line to it and say, well, it's always there. And that's about as far as it went. But when I um, started Cloud Trade with, with, with David and Richard Manson, I focused immediately on the problem of the identification. Uh, I really, in fact, it, it's, it's, it's rather amusing when I come back and think of it that originally I saw the extraction of data from the PDF as something that would take me maybe a week at most. Um, and all my efforts were into the identification side of it. 
In fact, the PDF standard is so convoluted that it, it took probably a year of, of you know, programming and refinements and refinements and refinements to get us to the stage where we could um, work with all the strange odd variations with that, which that standard has in it. But that is still just unidentified data extraction. The whole thing that I built in after that was this rule system which would allow uh, rules writers to, in essence, feed into our engine the means by which data is identified. And, and that, I think, is our key differentiator and, and, and what it was all about. I suppose it, it begs the question, Richard, that you know, data capture, as you say, OCR uh, and unidentified data capture has been around a long time, and those technologies have um, have developed over the years. You know, some level of AI or, or algorithms have been built into them to try and improve the efficiency. Um, it begs the question: Why didn't you just take one of those engines rather than spending a year dealing with a capture piece? Utilize what was on the shelf, as it were, and try and bolt something on top. The uh, the um, there wasn't a and there still isn't actually a sophisticated PDF data extraction library. The um, OCR OCR is a different matter. We tried to steer away from OCR because in order to do uh, data identification beyond the simplest possible mechanisms. You have to do a lot of um, navigating and investigating of the document. And if you're using OCR with its very raw data uncertainties, that navigation starts to become unfeasible. The uh, you know it's it's simply that it, it, it there's too many sources of error. You have to keep going back to the document to find something about it to then go somewhere else in the document to go somewhere else in the document, and if each of those steps has got sort of OCR uncertainty, you pretty soon just fail. And in fact, okay. our, with, you know, with our rule system originally, we we discovered that it was about twenty times harder. You know, I mean OCR is a lot better now, but I mean it was twenty times harder to write rules for documents which had OCR uncertainty than for those which didn't. So we narrowed our, our, our scope to PDF data documents. And the sad thing about the PDF standard is that the, the success of you know, extracting data had come up from PDFs uh, is, is dependent not on the standard, but whether on Acrobat Reader succeeds. So what you find is that there are loads of PDF documents out there which are totally outside of the PDF standard. But Acrobat Reader still reads them. And if Acrobat Reader still reads them, then you are expected to be able to read them as part of your process. Mm -hmm. And that's why it takes such a long time to iron out all these idiosyncrasies. It's very easy to do something that just sticks to the standard, but that is way too short for, on expectations. Right. OK, thank you for that. So so we've got the, the ability, as I mentioned earlier, a unique ability to extract I suppose the technical layers of a document rather than using the image and therefore running OCR. So we don't use OCR, but we have an application generated document and we can, as we do, we deliver 100% accuracy from the data that we extract. But back to the, the subject here of the rules. So um, if you think about it, as you, you sort of um, gave an analogy that you and I starting a new job, we've got some documents in front of us and somebody says you need to extract this information that sits here in the top right, there in the bottom left, and you need to do this with the information and you need to process it. Over years, we're going to become very familiar with those documents or maybe not years, but over weeks and, and therefore it, it becomes semi automated in, in terms of how we process still takes time and technology can do it more accurately and a lot quicker. But as human beings would say, ah, oh, it's um, it's the third Wednesday of a month and um, it's from this supplier and therefore, oh, I apply this rule or actually um, that um, supplier or, or for an order, or sorry, that customer for an order or the, the supplier's invoice, um, actually what they meant to put in the document was this because we know. So how does your rule address that uh, or, or does that impose other challenges and problems in terms of a downstream process? Well, the, the, the rule system is a logical system and, and the basic promise that we make you know, in, in cloud trade is if you can articulate the rule, then we can implement it. OK, so anything, anything. I mean, it is, you know, it is built on a logical programming language, Prolog, and, you know, it, it, it really does allow us to put any sort of logic that you like. You know, the only things we can't do is if, if you actually cannot articulate it, you know, if it's, you know, if the only way to get information out is some sort of artistic intuition, then, you know, we're not going to be able to do it. But right. if you can give us a rule, 
you can implement it and therefore automate it and therefore you know do it at the speed of IT. Right, absolutely. Uh, and that takes a lot of the guesswork <laughs> that typically happens in the process and uh, I'm sure that from a, a governance and a compliance point of view, utilizing a service like CloudTrade because A, 100% data accuracy, B, using the rules that have been agreed for the downstream process means that uh, as a you know, an executive of a business, I can now trust that data that's been delivered through this process. Whereas before, and you know, Richard, you and I hear this all the time, I have to touch every document. Why? Well, because I don't trust the output I'm getting and therefore I need a human being to address it. And as we've just discussed, sometimes a human being, you know, has had a bad night's sleep and, you know, they're distracted doing something else and they hit the wrong key, etc. And therefore you've got more work downstream to process that document. So what I'm hearing with CloudTrade and, and again, back to the opening question around what drove you and your passion was we've got a unique ability in the technology stack you've developed to extract with 100%, apply those business rules that we've um, understood by somebody articulating those to us. So we know that's going to run consistently all the time. And, you know, back to your, your opening, my opening question around the challenge that you saw in the market. Um, did you not, you must have looked around to say, well, who else does this? Or is the, the approach that CloudTrade have now truly unique in the market? I think it always was unique. I think when uh, when I became involved, I've always I've always by nature anyway been an innovator rather than in, an mm. imitator. You know, that's just the way way I am. Uh, I, I mean, I, you know, I did look around a little bit, but you know, people tend to be imitators, which means that what tends to happen in the market is that if there is no solution at present, somebody will innovate and then everybody else will just copy. You know, so you then get a little bit fooled by the idea that there might be 10 solutions all doing the same thing and imagine that everyone's come to the same conclusion independently and actually no, they haven't. You know, one person came up with the idea and then all the other companies were put under a great deal of pressure not to go out on a limb, just literally do what the other person's doing, but maybe try and improve on it. But I've never been like that. I mean, first of all, I, I, I can see that there's no great reason to respect what's, what's out there in the industry because like I said, most people would have just copied. And you know, the thing about the the problem, the identification problem, was that it's hard. It's not an easy one to solve. So, so you know that you, in order to, to innovate, you have to be in a certain position as a company where you are free to do so. You have to have that, that freedom, that, that sort of, perhaps you have to be small, you know, able to innovate means, you know, you haven't got people breathing down your neck asking you to be accountable for every second of the day. It's yeah. an experiment, you know. So that that really is what gave us the ability to produce really just the right solution. Right. You know, I, I don't I don't really think there is any other solution that I can think of. I know people are now trying to leapfrog over the whole rule system by by bringing neural networks and machine learning and so on. And I and I do not sure. believe that that's going to succeed. Right. I think that what we produced actually was what the first innovators should have done. But I think they saw that it was a difficult problem and shied away from it. And they thought, no, what I will do is we'll just do the unidentified data capture bit and pass the identification side on onto humans. We won't, we won't try to crack the problem. Right. Like natural language processing, which is actually what you need to do for, for, for data identification. Right. Excellent. So we have a unique capability to extract data off a application generated document. We have the ability to capture uh, rules that have been articulated to us and apply those consistently in our end to end process, uh, ensuring that we do truly deliver straight through processing of documents, which is fantastic. So that begs the question, Richard, no business can stand still. What's the future hold? Well, I, was, I almost thought you were going to allude to that, actually. I mean, we we've um, got a lot of experience now in um, writing rules to capture documents, uh, particularly in the sort of the, the domain that we mainly operate in, which is, you know, invoices and orders. Um, so I'll repeat it again, you might have to edit that out. Right. But mainly, <laughs> but mainly, in the, in, mainly in the domain that we operate in, in invoices and orders. And we are now bringing in this, this, this new product, which is an, an evolution of what we do, and it's called Grand Elf. And the concept of Grand Elf is, let's take that rules expertise and see if we can and synthesize from that a set of rules coupled together with analysis of the documents that we've processed and create a new application which basically for, for some subset of documents will go to the center of the document and present 
a sort of wizard style Q&A style interface to allow the rules to be written for them without going through the rules writing process. So, so the, the person who uses Grand Apple sub, submits a document in and if it fulfills certain criteria, they, you know, the Grand Elf wizard then says, OK, I've, I've identified certain things about this document, which means that I think I can write these rules automatically with help from you. So can you just confirm that this is the invoice number or this is the order number? And having done so, can you confirm, and, and may not necessarily have to ask this question if it's obvious anyway, but just in case it isn't, they might say, can you confirm how I should extract this information in the future? Because I think it is, say, to the right of this word or below this word or somewhere over here or what have you. And as the, 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 the center of the document gives their answers, all of this is stored and it effectively becomes a set of rules. But a set of rules written by this assisted mechanism with an end user rather than by a rules writer. The rules writers are still necessary, of course, for, for documents which aren't that easy to do, you know, where, right. the, where the logic is where the logic isn't so easily synthesized, and particularly right, particularly right now with line level data in there. Um, so but it, is this, of course we can grow that, you know. So do you see this being um, effectively documents on the fly, self service rules writing? Yeah, in essence. I mean, it, it, you know, there, there there will always be the case where. Um, as I said, we've got to, we have to investigate exactly how we're going to position it in the market. Who's going to be doing the 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 the, the grand alf UI work? Right. But you know, we we can start from that premise. Actually, the document can can come in. The the, the center can can submit it, and either the center or somebody within CloudTrade or whoever it is can look at it, go through the wizard, and if it turns out, you know, the the grand alf says, okay, you know, is it one of these values, and it's not. Then, then the person goes, oh, actually, this is a more complicated document. Or if they say, even if they get the value right, and then they say, well, in future cases, can I get the the, the information in, in this matter, in this manner? And it gives a, you know, a list of choices. And the person in front of it goes, no, I'm sorry, it's, it's more complicated than that. They can kind of hit a little button to say, OK, now we've got to jump out onto our traditional rules writing and do it that way. Right. Really exciting, Richard. Um, I'm just conscious of, of time today. Thank you so much for that. And I think in summary, um, I often hear our customers, uh, our happy customers saying this, that what we do is truly magic. And you've just given the answer that uh, with Grand Alf coming along, we've taken that to the next level. Ah, yeah, so so <laughs> Richard, Actually, thanks. I, I, I dislike using the word magic because I always want to say to people, it's perfectly explainable. And we're going to some ends in our, in our new FAQ page on the website to make sure that people can see exactly what we do. There's nothing up our sleeves, you know, no, no. but uh, but yes, I get your point. <laughs> Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you again. And uh, we'll look forward to the next blog.